What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis of the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I'm trying to, anyway. I am a professional drum teacher. That was kind of lame. And a gigging musician, and I have been for the last 20 years. On today's episode, we're going to be watching Matt Cameron of Pearl Jam and Soundgarden and Temple of the Dog play Even Flow. I know what you're going to say. Matt Cameron is best known for playing with Soundgarden, and you are correct. But Soundgarden kind of existed before the drum cam video fad uh, uh, became a thing. Uh, and I wanted to do uh, drum cam videos for the first 10 or 12 videos, and then after that... I will be watching a Soundgarden video, and I don't care if it's a drum cam video, because I want to watch Chris Cornell again. It'll be super uh, depressing to watch him, but I really do miss him, and I love Chris Cornell. Now, that brings us to Pearl Jam, the spinal tap of our day. They've been through like four or five drummers in their existence. You got Dave Cruzen, that uh, was on 10. You got Dave Abrazis, which is on Versus on Vitology. Uh, then, I don't know, some big dust-up happened and Dave Abrazis was out. Then they brought in Jack Irons, who's best known for being in Red Hot Chili Peppers. First record he's on, which is called No Code, is wonderful. You should check that video out. But since the year 2000, in the year 2000, uh, we've had Matt Cameron uh, manning the drum throne in Pearl Jam. When he plays in Pearl Jam, he plays like a completely different drummer. If you are aware of both uh, uh, catalogs, you know that when he's in Pearl Jam, it's a whole lot different than when he plays with Soundgarden. Now, with that being said, let's watch Matt Cameron of Pearl Jam play Even Flow. This video brought to you by Vic Firth, who make an excellent product that I don't use. I use Regal Tip. Oh man, he's got those uh, wood hoops. It's the one piece of gear that I don't have and really want. Uh, wood hoops take away that uh, metallic uh, uh, ring that the regular metal hoops that we all use produce they give you just like a woody thuddy tone Levon Helms also famous for recording with wood hoops he's been playing those wood hoops back in the since back in the day when he was with uh, the uh, drum company IOT okay so right here I'm not a big fan of his uh, ride cymbal placement. Let's go ahead and uh, use this as an excuse to talk about drum setup, which is something that drum teachers get asked all the time. There's a few absolute rules that you should uh, adhere to, in my opinion. You know, you should have the toms as close together as possible uh, at the same angle, you know, to make uh, make for ease of moving around. Uh, you want your your symbols to be in a uh, an easy to get to place, but I mean that being said, if you've watched John Stainier and that new band uh, uh, Battles, he plays with like a China symbol all the way up here, so I mean works for him. But this uh, placement, <clears throat> it's very hard rock to have your rod symbol way over here. I'm not a gigantic fan of that. Uh, I like to have my ride symbol right here. I don't want to have to reach all the way over here. But that also uh, just proves that drum setup is what feels comfortable for you. Obviously, this is what feels comfortable for him. It's just personal preference, and that's you know where I try to get my students to start at, start out at. Matt Cameron is a first ballot Hall of Famer, good looking drummer. That is a handsome bastard. I'm such a Gen Xer. I'm such, uh, like, I'm such a fan of this song and this band. 
Now watch what he's doing right here. <clears throat> Just because you're playing in a, you know, you know, a hard driving rock band, doesn't mean that you can't still spice up the grooves with ghost notes in between that two and four. You know, watch what he's doing right there. You know, he's obviously playing that two and four. Uh, but in between all those notes, he's playing that, that left hand dancey stuff that makes the groove move. I don't know, that's not what he's playing, but that's an example of that. Just because you're playing in a loud, hard driving rock band doesn't mean that you can't spice those grooves up with ghost notes like that. He has really good posture something I preach. Good posture just makes it easier to play. And that's what we're all trying to do is make what we do easier. He's got that, that whip left hand down. It allows him to get a lot of power that One of the things I've always appreciated about Pearl Jam is live, they stretch, and they improvise. They're not a jam band. You can stretch and improvise and still play off each other. Man, Jeff Ahmet on bass is straight destroying it right now. And listen to that. Make sure you go back and listen to the original recording without my nonsense over top of it and listen to what Jeff Ahmet's doing right here. And that brings up one of the most fundamental elements of playing in a rock band is the marriage of the drums and bass. If the bass player is killing it, it's much easier for you to sound great. And if you've ever been on a gig where the bass player's not killing it, it's almost impossible to be great. If you're ever on tour with a band, you'll always notice that the bass player and the drummer always hang out. That's because their chemistry on stage, a lot of times anyway, uh, translates to being super, super good friends off the stage. Uh, I know the four or five bass players that I've played with over my uh, uh, career, I'm still really great friends with all of them. That being said, if you can understand the marriage of what the bass player and the drummer is and, and, and why that's important, you will always make a band sound good. Yeah, so, oh yeah, I like that. You see where he was, uh, you know, using the, the, using the shoulder of the cymbal to get the big crashy sound and now he's going up to the bell to get that pingy sound. And again, man, this is just a great example of like a drummer and a bass player just locking in and playing off each other. Yeah, he's always laying down that two and four. He's not playing a lot of over the bar line or, or trying to... Okay, ha ha, ya ha. Okay, that's a, that's a great example of... Uh, uh, why it's important to know your rudiments, children. One of the biggest mistakes that drum teachers make is trying to convince little Jimmy or little Joni to play and learn your rudiments. Teachers, drum teachers, all teachers, get away from this. Don't just look at the student and say, do this because I said so. Give them examples. Show them, hey, that boring thing that I'm showing you, you know, double strokes, paradiddles, accent taps, flams. Let's be honest, that's boring. At first, if you don't know how to apply them, if you are trying to uh, introduce these concepts, the concepts that aren't the, the most fun to practice, show them something like this little lick I'm about to show you. Show them, hey, little Jimmy or little Joni, if you learn your double strokes, you can do licks like this. Watch what he does right here. It's 
Gum. That. Show your students why it's an important thing to know those fundamentals. They'll be more likely to go home and practice them. And again, Jeff Ahmet is straight murdering it right now. He's such a good bass player. Matt Cameron's just got a, just a big wide, nice 30 second note run there. He's got a big wide groove. I don't know which guitar player is playing right now, but he's destroying it as well. That lick right there is that six tuple hand to foot uh, drum fill that of course started with John Bonham, which of course started from Elvin Jones, and everyone should know that lick. Okay, so I was wondering about right here, like I know that this band right now is kind of playing open-ended, and uh, I was wondering how they were going to get out of this jam. And it sounds like we're getting ready to decrescendo. Yes, music majors, I know that it is actually diminuendo. And that's what happened. So they know through years and years of playing this song, this is how they're going to get out of that jam. That allows the drummer, that allows the guitar player to solo as much as they want to. And then when they decide to start bringing the volume down, the band knows to go with them. Those are the little tricks. There's another variation of the John Bonham six tuplet lick. Man, again, so good looking. Before this is done, I feel I should uh, uh, deal with this because I kind of just thought about it. Matt Cameron right now is playing a cover. And if you're a drummer, if you're a musician out there, you've eventually played a cover. He just happens to be playing a cover of a famous band. We've all dealt with this, where we've, uh, you know, went to audition or we've already been hired for the gig and we've been given X amount of tracks and they say, learn these songs and come either audition or, you know, uh, play at that first rehearsal. There's a few different ways to go about doing that. And this is the way that I've done it most of the time in my uh, career. I really hate saying career, but in my drumming days, this is how I've done it. And I think it's the best way to go about it. The band I'm in right now, uh, before I joined them, they had already recorded uh, you know, two whole records. So they already had a, a catalog with set parts and things that they were comfortable with. So when they gave me all the all those tunes, which was, you know, like 19, 20 songs, I went through and I learned them note for note as close as possible. Here's the reason why I think that's a good way to go about it. When you go into that rehearsal for the first time or that audition, you're playing the drum parts that that band is already comfortable with. They've lived with those songs way before you were in the band, and these are the parts they know. That's the best way to go about it. Now, that being said, once you start gigging with that band, and live you're making them feel comfortable, eventually you can kind of start crafting those tunes more into your style of playing. Now, if there's stuff that you listened to in the recordings that is just so great that that needs to be there, by all means do that. But you will be much more fulfilled down the road when you start with a band that already has a bunch of material that's set in stone by first playing that record as close to possible. Playing that record as close as you can. That will... Uh, give the band trust in your abilities and that's the big word once they trust you to be able to operate the instrument while their songs are playing then they're going to give you some leeway to let that 
uh, track live in the style that you play. That's the best way that, uh, that that has worked for me over the years. And that's what Matt Cameron's doing right here. You know, this is a track that Dave Cruzen played on. Matt Cameron had, didn't play on this record first. Uh, I'm sure, nah, he didn't have to do what I just said. It's Matt Cameron. Pearl Jam was probably like, we need a drummer. Let's call Matt. And then he was in the band. But for those of us who aren't Matt Cameron, that's a, that's a really good way to approach joining a band that already has recorded material. Yeah, when I, when I came back at really fast 30 second note, feel relaxed. If you watch these videos, I'm always gonna be talking about when you play those faster passages, be just as relaxed as if you were playing something slower. You know, right there, he was playing, you know, like a tap and accent thing. Another rudimental part. It's almost like Matt Cameron was in marching band. I have no clue if he was or not, but he he has a lot of those traits that marching band people take into their drum set playing. I, I call this ending the trash can ending when you you know you play blow and you play a bunch of chops and you end it. Vic Firth, the perfect pair. Is that an innuendo, Vic Firth? So anyway. Matt Cameron playing with Pearl Jam, playing Even Flow. Again, as I said before, I will be uh, reacting to a Soundgarden uh, video because I just love Soundgarden. I saw them in Lollapalooza, on Lollapalooza, like, God, like 99, 2000. It was the year that Metallica was the headliner, and Matt Cameron just blew me away that day. So, anyway, man, Matt Cameron. Listen to him in any band that he plays in. He is always going to give you excellent drumming to learn from. Now, with that being said, uh, if you enjoyed that, please give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. That really helps me out. Uh, feel free to comment, like, and share. And remember, keep practicing until it's easy.